Hello guys, this is Deepan Gatalia, your tutor for ACCA UK Tax and SBL subject. As the ACCA exams are near, I am going to post a daily one video of the rapid revision. So I would request you to subscribe this YouTube channel of Career Compass and click on the bell icon so you can never miss any video from us. So now, without wasting the time, let's start with it. In this session, we will going to start with the income tax competition. This session is just a basic aspect about, about the income tax. And students, let me clarify that the whatever income tax chapters that we will going to learn, it will only and only apply to the individuals. Now, students, the first and foremost important thing in the whole income tax is that there has to be the uh, tax year, there has to be the taxable person, and there has to be the taxable income. Then and then only you can levy the income tax. Now students, let's start with the what exactly is the tax year. Now students, for you, for the tax year 2021, the tax dates are from 6th April 2020 to the 5th April 2021. Now who can be the taxable person for to levy the income tax? So the taxable person is the person who is the UK resident. Now if you are a UK resident, then on your worldwide income, the income tax will be levied. But if you are a non-UK resident, then also there can be the implications of the income tax. But if you are a non-UK resident, then only and only your UK income will become chargeable under the income tax. Now, and the third thing is the what exactly is the taxable income. There are lots of taxable income possible students for the case of the in individuals. A students taxable income can be employment income, property income, dividend income, trading income, pension income, savings income and income from trust. And there are students lots of other exempt income also which is ex exactly important one for the examination and which you have to remember. There are exempt incomes are interest from nsi certificates gaming betting lottery premium bond winning and other uh, exempt income students you can see on the screen now let's come to the important thing and that is the proforma to calculate the income tax students so first of all we have to remember that first of all we have to uh, describe all the taxable income that we are having first of all we have to write those things but whenever we write the amount of our taxable income we have to differentiate it whether it's a non saving income whether it's a savings income or whether it's a dividend income then after students once you are having the total income there are first of all the first deduction will be there and that is the relief deduction relief includes the two things it includes the trading loss as well as it includes the qualifying interest okay then after students once you deduct your relief then after you will have your net income please remember there is it's a very important thing after deduction of the relief what income you will get you will get a net income once you get the net income students then after the deduction of the personal allowance will be there and you know already that the personal allowance of, allowance of 12500 person will get for the tax year of 2021 and then after students after deducting the personal allowance you will get the taxable full and final income once you are having the taxable income now students it's an easy task to just levy the tax rates i frankly speaking it's not that much easy to levy the income tax or to apply the tax rates students i hope you know that how to apply the tax rates but if you know if you are having any query with the applying the tax rates students feel free to contact me okay once you apply the tax rate students finally you will have your tax liability and uh, students here for your just a reference purpose i am giving you the tax rates table so you can see in the screen and just follow the tax rates table accordingly but now students we also have to see that how much personal allowance we can get now that personal allowance generally will be available of 12500 that we have seen in the proforma students but the thing is that if the person is having the higher income then there may, may be the possibility that the person will get the lesser personal allowance now how you will going to decide students you can see on the screen that if the person's total net income what does it mean by total net income the income after deductions of the relief will be called as a net income right if you once again forgot go back to the proforma review the proforma you will find one net income so that will be your total and net income once you have to see that how much is your total net income if your total net income is less than hundred thousand pound then your personal allowance will be fully twelve thousand five hundred be available but if your total net income is more than hundred thousand pound then 
how much personal allowance you will get students that right now i don't know to determine your personal allowance in that particular case you have to calculate your adjusted net income which we call as an ani there is another students proforma given over here in the screen which is showing the how to calculate your adjusted net income Once you calculate your A N I students, now we can decide that how much personal allowance you will going to get. Now, once again, students, if your A N I is less than hundred thousand pounds, students, your personal allowance will be twelve thousand five hundred fully. But if your A N I is more than hundred and twenty five thousand pound that you can see on the screen, then your then in that case, personal allowance will be zero. And the third thing is that if your A N I is between hundred thousand pound to hundred and twenty five thousand pound, then you have to apply the reduction in your personal allowance. That means that your total personal allowance is twelve thousand five hundred, but out of that you have to reduce some portion of your personal allowance. Now let me give you the formula that what will be your reduction in this in this situation. Now reduction formula is a very simple. It's a fifty percentage of the excess A N I you are having over. Over and above hundred thousand pound, so that's why A N I minus hundred thousand pound multiplied by fifty percentage. According to that, you will have your reduction. But students, I am not saying that whatever you will get the figure uh, on the reduction. No, that that amount that you will get after applying the formula, that is just reduction amount. It's not full and final personal allowance. So let's say suppose your total personal allowance is twelve thousand five hundred, and the reduction amount is coming up. Let's say five thousand. So the remaining students seven thousand five hundred will become your revised personal allowance. Okay, so this is how you have to calculate your personal allowance students. And now let's come to the next concept, which is the extension of the band. Extension of the band will only and only come up into the two scenarios, students. If the person contributes into the personal pension scheme or the person makes a gift aid donation, students, then and then only you have to extend your basic rate band. Yes, students. I'm repeating once again. You have to just and just extend your basic rate band. Okay. Now you already know that how the basic rate band works, how the higher rate band works, students. How additional rate band works. You also know that there is a called in capacity. Now each and every band do have their own capacity, and students, higher rate band also is having their own capacity of one hundred and twelve thousand five hundred. But by extension of the band, you can see on the screen that higher rate band capacity have not yet increased. What What exactly have been changed, students? What you can see is the basic rate band capacity have been increased by ten thousand. I hope you have. I hope you got the idea of the extension of the band stone. This this is just a rapid revision session. I will obviously going to talk about each and every important aspect, but I will not be able to explain each and every things in detail. But if you have query with the extension of the band stones, feel free to ask me. Then after the next concept is students the marriage allowance. Now as I told you that the Marriage allowance is nothing but students. It's a transfer of your personal allowance. That means if the wife is having the excess personal allowance, then wife can transfer the personal allowance, excess personal allowance to the husband. But students over here, the personal allowance, maximum personal allowance that can be transferred is of only and only one two five zero pound. And now students. The important thing over here is that actually, even if the HMRC have said that that the wife can transfer the one two five zero pound of the personal allowance to the husband, but exactly if you see over here, wife will transfer the personal allowance of one two five zero, but the husband, the receiver party, will not get the personal allowance, but husband will get only and only the tax benefit out of that personal allowance. Okay, so that's why the husband will get. The twenty percent tax benefit that is two hundred and fifty pound as in a tax reduction. Why we apply the twenty percent is because over here to claim the marriage allowance, there is one rule given by the HMRC that both the parties, the husband and the wife, both the parties has to be the basic rate taxpayer. If any of the party is not a basic rate taxpayer, that then the marriage allowance is not possible. So I hope you got the idea. Now let's come to the next point, which is the child benefit income tax charge. Now the child benefit income tax charge is nothing but student the government gives the child benefit to the parents and uh, if suppose students the parents are poor if both the parents are poor then we don't need to worry parents can enjoy the child benefit that they have received from the government but if the any of the parent is rich then the parent the richer parent have to uh, 
pay off have to give it to give back that child benefit to the hmrc yes so first of all how we can decide whether the parent is a rich or poor students we know that the if the any of the parents mothers fathers adjusted net income is less than 50000 then the parents can be called as an poor but if any of the parents adjusted net income is more than 50000 pound then we can say the parent is a rich now once the parent is a rich student we have to levy the income tax charge how much amount we will going to take it back from the parent students it depends on the ani if ani is less than 50000 then the both the parents are poor students don't know income tax uh, charge will be levied but if the parents ani is more than 60000 pound that 100% of the child benefit will be given back to the hmrc but if let's say suppose your ani is between 50000 to 60000 then you then you have to apply a formula where you just take the ani minus 50000 divided by 100 it will give you the percentage okay and whatever percentage you get after applying that formula that much portion of your child benefit will be uh, claimed as and will be not claimed will be given to the hmrc as an income tax charge okay so i hope you got the idea yes students now let's start with the next topic which is individual savings account it's a kind of basically you can say it's your saving account as the name itself is suggesting uh, if you, if you are having the savings with yourself you can deposit into the individual savings account this isa account can be the cash isa account or it can be the stocks and shares isa account you can invest your money into simple cash uh, isa account where you will simply get the 3% 4% return in the form of interest and whatever that interest you receive from the cash isa account will be exempted under the income tax and if you just invest your amount into the stocks and share isa account then what you will get in return yes you will going to get the return or in the form of dividend and that dividend that you have received students that will be once again exempted from your income tax and now students let's say suppose you have invested your amount into stocks and shares isa in future it may be possible that when you sell your shares into the market at that time it may be possible that you may have your gains uh, chargeable gains with you capital gain with you now once again that capital gain on the uh, isa stocks will be exempted from the cgt also so it's a very superb amount a superb students benefit but the over here the maximum limit is there that person can invest only and only up to 20000 pound into the isa you cannot invest more than that amount no basically you can invest but the tax benefit will only and only be available up to 20000 pound okay so that is the maximum limit students for you for the taxation purpose about the isa okay here we can say here we are done with the income tax computation chapter students but still for any query feel free to ask the next chapter will be there in the next video see you guys bye